As the royals continue to fascinate people around the world, the touching real-life story of Princess Diana of Wales arrives on Broadway. We're here at the Lotte New York Palace Hotel to meet the stars of the new musical, Diana. Living rather large Yet feeling rather small You step up to the mic But you're not heard at all You're playing Princess Diana, literally one of the most loved women, I think, in the history of the world, so no pressure, right? No pressure at all, no <laughs> pressure, especially being British, too. So many amazing women have played Queen Elizabeth II. Now we can add two-time Tony winner Judy Kay to the list. How does that feel? The Queen sings. It feels so wonderful, so scary. I hope I can do her justice. What was your in to finding this woman? I was obviously uh, spoiled by the amount of YouTube videos. How does she move? How does she hold herself? Which has truly been an ongoing process with lots of work to stand up straight, which is quite hard to do when you have terrible 2020 posture. The story of Princess Diana, I was shocked that no one had done it yet because it right. seemed so theatrical. And then we sort of just started dipping our toes in very slowly at first saying, can we write the songs for royalty? And we wrote a little bit of it and played it for some people. And they were like, oh my God, this is really good. You should keep going. So. It, it, so I think it's so much better than wow, that's not good. Stop. Yeah, <laughs> that's like putting the draw. So and here we are. I think there will be surprises for even the people who think they know the story. For people who don't know, she's worth it. I think she's an amazing person to tell a story about. Is it fair to say that Camilla, in a musical called Diana, might be called a villain? No. There is. Um an assumption that she is a villain. And it is yeah. amazing how many people still see her as a villain. Yeah. Uh, but I love that in this show, she is sympathetic and you perhaps see the other side of the story and um, the love story that is Camilla and Charles as well. When you follow real life drama like this, it's almost like a soap opera. And in the soap opera, we all love Diana and Prince Charles. You know, we don't like this guy so much. But the musical really is kind of telling everyone's story. And yeah, that's our goal. Yeah, yeah. I think that is part of the responsibility of this is to uh, take a look at this man that everyone thinks they know and approach him from a really human perspective. The challenge was what were the voices. So we started with, let's get the queen. So the queen was, I, I figured, okay, she's like military drums and strings and French horns and very regal. And then I was like, I want each character to have a different voice. Then Charles should be a string quartet. And then Diana should be rock, pop, but through modern eyes, not the 80s, but through modern eyes. And then Camilla's kind of like in between. She's like light FM. There's like, uh, <laughs> she's kind of rocking, but with acoustic guitars. <laughs> And then the, the paparazzi or the clash, just punk guitars, and then making them live on top of each other, through each other in those songs. You know, that was, uh, it, on paper, it sounded so easy. And then uh, in reality, it's, uh, it's a great challenge. She was up against these huge odds, and rather than crumbling and dying, she buckled down, found her little nugget of light, and clung to it, and that has seen her all the way through to becoming, you know, Diana Prince of Wales that we know today. You don't realize uh, how bold she really was and brave she was. She had to have a sit down with the queen and ask if she could exit her marriage and then forge a life outside of the palace, to have that much courage and leave all of that behind is something we need to remember. She was even more remarkable, I think, than we came to understand. I think we honor her very, very much in this story. Sometimes though it's best to be under.